Life is so much more than a diagnosis. It's about sharing time with those you love, hanging with friends who lift you up, and experiencing all those moments that bring you joy. All hits, no skips. Learn more about Cascali Ribocyclob 200 milligrams at KISQALI.com and talk to your doctor to see if Cascali is right for you. So long live singing to the oldies, jamming out to something new, and everything in between. A love gone wrong and a field of deception. Known for her winning smile and welcoming spirit, what happened to 26-year-old pregnant single mother, Kacha Smith? Shockingly, Kacha's story takes a dark turn when her body is discovered and detectives have no leads. What happens when love becomes fatal? This is the Fatal Attraction Podcast with Field of Deception. They were a young couple forging a bright future. He promised her the world. She wanted to have that home and have that family. But in an instant, this small town would be ripped apart. Some workers had found the body. She was shot three times. She was laying there, her eyes was open. It devastated me. At the heart of the crime is a slew of secrets and lies. He had two girls in love with him. She would do whatever she needed to do to ensure that relationship. And the truth will reveal a love gone wrong. What did you do? She wanted to be loved. She loved until she died. April 27th, 2017. It's a quiet Thursday morning in Mariana, Florida, a town of just 7,000, 60 miles inland from Panama City. I always ask people that come here, how did you find Mariana? You know, because it's so small. What industry there is in Mariana is mostly packing and shipping produce from the farms in the local area. It's 8 a.m. at a packing plant just north of town. Two workers are arriving for the day's shift when one of them spots something in the field behind the warehouse. He was pulling in, and he said, look like somebody's been dumping trash out here or something. They thought it was a trash bag, which is not uncommon. People throw everyday trash out on somebody else's property. But as the men walk over to pick up the garbage bag... Yo, hold up. They make a horrifying discovery. Upon closer look, they realized it was a trash bag. It was actually a body. As she was laying there, her eyes was open. The workers call 911. Yes, it's an emergency. And when deputies from the Jackson County Sheriff's Department arrive on the scene, they quickly realize they're dealing with a homicide. We did determine that she had been shot multiple times. There's no ID on the body. But when Captain Scott Edwards arrives on scene, he's horrified to realize that he already knows the victim's name. I knew her mom and stepdad, but my wife knew the family better than I did. From the scene, Captain Edwards calls his wife, Cherie, who's also an investigator with the Jackson County Sheriff's Department. This is Edwards. I received a phone call from my husband, Captain Edwards. He advised me that there had been a homicide. Yeah, we found the body. It looks like it's Princella's daughter. Scott, are you sure? I'm sure. It's... It's Keisha Smith. 25-year-old Keisha Smith and her family were known to almost everyone in the small town of Mariana, Florida. Everybody pretty much knows everybody in Mariana. Her mom and her dad were both hardworking people, both very friendly people, very well liked in the community. They were nice people, church-going people. If you needed anything, they would help you out. The same was true of Keisha 
who was known for her welcoming smile and loving heart. She embraced everybody. I don't think she saw any wrong in anybody. To know her was to definitely love her. Keisha's greatest love was her four-year-old son, Caden. Keisha would do anything for Caden. She adored him and spoiled him rotten. Play with him every day. I'm gonna get you. And I got you! <laughs> Keisha was an awesome mom. Whatever he needed, as a parent, that comfort and that support, that's what she gave Kaden. Kaden's father wasn't in the picture. It was very hard on her. I can tell that it bothered her. She always wanted to have a father figure for Kaden. But the single mom did everything she could to create the best possible life for herself and her son. She got into the medical field. She became a certified CNA, and she worked at the convalescent center. The residents, they loved her. Keisha was big on helping people. A busy work schedule and a little boy at home didn't keep Keisha from dreaming of one day finding Mr. Wright. She was looking for someone to love her. True, true love. In October of 2016, when Keisha began dating 22-year-old Damian O'Neill, she thought she had found all that and more. Keisha and Damian started dating, and it was a whirlwind romance. The couple's relationship took off shortly after meeting through mutual friends. She would talk about Damian a lot. They were always together. I've been waiting for a man like you for a long time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. She loves spending time with him. She was absolutely in love with him. She seemed very happy. Coming! Keisha was also attracted to the fact that Damien showed genuine affection toward her son. The first time I saw him, she brought him to the house. He sat there on the chair. Daddy. Hey, there he is. Daddy. I said, there's got to be something for that little boy to be calling you daddy. There. Oh, yes, ma'am. I love kids. I love kids. So how was work today? While Keisha's family felt things were moving too fast, they saw the effort Damien was making to be a good man to Keisha and Caden. He did seem like he was invested in Caden. He did seem like he was invested in their relationship. I do remember him telling her, I'm going to be able to provide, I'm going to buy you this, buy you that. He wanted to take care of Keisha and Kaden. He wanted to be the man in the family. By the spring of 2017, it looked like Keisha's dreams of true love were finally coming true. He was going to buy Keisha her ring, and she was ecstatic. But on the morning of April 27th, 2017, the future Damien and Keisha were planning is shattered when police believe they found Keisha Smith's body. When an investigator, Scott Edwards, recognized the victim immediately. She had been shot multiple times, and whoever killed her attempted to hide her body with trash bags. Captain Scott Edwards has the difficult task of alerting his wife, Cherie who was also an investigator with the sheriff's department and close friend of Keisha's mother. He knew that I was extremely close to Keisha and her family. Send me a picture. I need to be sure. I'll send one. At the scene, Captain Edwards snaps a picture of the victim's face and texts it to his wife. When he sent me the photograph, I immediately recognized it to be Keisha. Yeah. You're right. It's her. But who would want Keisha dead? For Detective Cherie Edwards, answering that question has become personal. 
I knew that without a shadow of a doubt, whether I was the lead investigator or not, that I would make sure that everything possible was going to be done on this case for justice for her family. Stay tuned to learn more about this intriguing case when we return with more Fatal Attraction. McDonald's is not new to chicken. So maybe stop questioning that chicken cred and get your hands on the McCrispy. Juicy fried chicken, buttery bun, unmatched pickle to chicken ratio. Yeah, they know what they're doing. In fact, we can honestly say they're not new to chicken. They're true to chicken. The McCrispy. Only at McDonald's. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Life is so much more than a diagnosis. It's about sharing time with those you love, hanging with friends who lift you up, and experiencing all those moments that bring you joy. All hits, no skips. Learn more about Cascali Ribocyclob 200 milligrams at KISQALI.com and talk to your doctor to see if Cascali is right for you. So long live singing to the oldies, jamming out to something new, and everything in between. In the spring of 2017, it looked as if single mother Keisha Smith had finally found true love with 22-year-old Damian O'Neill. She was over the moon. She couldn't be happier. Damian purchased an engagement ring for Keisha. They was going to get married. But on April 27, 2017, Workers find her body dumped behind a building outside her hometown of Mariana, Florida. She was dead and had been murdered. Investigators from the Jackson County Sheriff's Department scour the scene for clues. We did determine the case had been shot multiple times and there were some tire tracks in there. Of course, the people in and out of the facility that morning was covering up other tracks leading in and out. So very little evidence, really. Identifying who it was and knowing that she was shot, that's all they had initially. With little evidence at the crime scene, detectives suspect the murder occurred elsewhere. There was no signs of a struggle in the surrounding area. You just had a body that was put there. The workers who called 911 offer no additional leads. A typical murder investigation, you go to a crime scene, there's going to be more clues than that. But in this one, there just wasn't. Anything that would indicate how she got there, what happened. Detectives' next step is to figure out just how long ago Keisha had been left in the field. Keisha was close to her family, and they had not reported her missing. Between that and the condition of Keisha's body, police believe she had only been dead for a few hours. Soon after, Sheriff's investigator Cherie Edwards knocks on the door of Keisha's mother, Princella White. Cherie has known Princella and the rest of the family for years. My daughter grew up with her kids, you know, knowing her kids, and we just got to be really good friends. We need to talk. Investigator Edwards delivers the awful news that her friend's daughter is dead. I'm so sorry. I'll never forget the look on her face, the heartache in her heart. This was devastating, absolutely devastating for her. No! Oh my God! I was just like, no, no, no. It was her screaming and crying, me trying to calm her down, and me telling her, we'll get through this, whatever she needed, I would do. Through her grief, Princella's thoughts turned to her four-year-old grandson. Oh, God. Where's Caden? She didn't know where Keisha's son was at. The fear spikes immediately. Where is the boy? Is he OK? Could this have been a violent kidnapping? Where's my grandbaby? Princella did not need another heartbreak. And I knew I had to find Caden. <gasps> All right, let's go. Investigator Edwards and Princella race to Keisha's apartment in search of the child. And when they arrive, Princella's heart sinks a second time. After police found Keisha, they sent a car to her apartment. We get over to her apartment. 
and I see a state vehicle parked out there. Onlookers gathering around, and more police come. All right, the victim has a four-year-old son. Check with the neighbors, see if anyone knows where he is. We kind of spanned out one door to door in the apartment complex where Keisha lives. While deputies canvass the building, Princella places a call to her grandson's daycare. And they say he was not at the daycare. The news sends Princella into a panic, reaching out to friends and family desperate to find her grandchild. We couldn't find him. We were calling, we were making Facebook posts, we were putting pictures everywhere. We thought we'd lost him too. After noticing the police car in front of Keisha's apartment, a woman emerges from a neighboring complex to see what's going on. With her is Caden. <gasps> oh my God, thank you, baby. Hey, my God, thank you, Lord, thank you. Oh my goodness. This lady stayed in the complex that would keep kids. The child was there, and he was okay. I got him in a hood, and, and we went back up to Keisha's apartment, and he says, Nana, where my mom at? I don't see her car. I don't see her car. I said, I don't know, baby. I don't know. While Princella takes her grandson upstairs, investigator Edwards questions the woman who'd been caring for him. She tells Detective Edwards that Keisha dropped Kaden off at her apartment the night before. She had not actually told that individual where she was going. But basically, that was the last time she was seen. So what time was that? That was around 10. The neighbor said that Keisha was supposed to be back in about an hour or so, but she never returned. Uh, I called her a bunch of times, but she didn't answer, so I just kept him overnight. Was anybody with her? No, and she drove her own car. OK, thank you. We'll be in touch. Detective Edwards knows finding Keisha's vehicle may provide crucial evidence of finding her killer's identity. We put a bolo out. We're looking for the car. Back at the station, investigators hope Keisha's family can shed some light on where she may have been going that night. And they quickly learn some troubling information. Keisha and Damien, they've been having some problems. Mm, weren't they engaged? That's what Keisha thought. The family informed investigators that engagement was off. Keisha found out that he was seeing someone else. The girl's name was Rachel Barnes. According to Princella, Damien had actually proposed to her instead of Keisha. Keisha was livid when she found out. Could Damien's change of heart have had something to do with Keisha's murder? Keisha was getting into it with this girl. It was all on social media. They were kind of feuding on text. Now detectives must wonder, has racial and Keisha's feud taken a deadly turn? The investigation reveals a tangled web of relationships, lies, and deceit, leading to a shocking conclusion. Stay tuned to learn more about this intriguing case when we return with more Fatal Attraction. McDonald's is not new to chicken. So maybe stop questioning that chicken cred and get your hands on the McCrispy. Juicy fried chicken, buttery bun, unmatched pickle to chicken ratio. Yeah, they know what they're doing. In fact, we can honestly say they're not new to chicken. They're true to chicken. The McCrispy. Only at McDonald's. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Life is so much more than a diagnosis. It's about sharing time with those you love, hanging with friends who lift you up, and experiencing all those moments that bring you joy. All hits, no skips. Learn more about Cascali Ribocyclob 200 milligrams at KISQALI.com and talk to your doctor to see if Cascali is right for you. So long live singing to the oldies, jamming out to something new, and everything in between. Hours after Keisha Smith was found murdered in the quiet rural town of Mariana, Florida, news of her death has traveled fast. All I could 
think of is why would somebody do something like that? And then just leave her out there like that. That's horrible. I couldn't even grasp who could have did this because of just her loving spirit. I just wanted to know why. Detectives are beginning to suspect a love triangle may have led to the crime. Keisha and her boyfriend, Damien, had recently split after Keisha found out that Damien was also seeing a girl named Rachel and had apparently proposed to her. It turns out both women was feuding via text and social media. Hoping to learn more, detectives turned to the object of the rivalry, 22-year-old Damien O'Neill. Once we learned that's who the boyfriend was, of course, he was one we needed to speak with. He was aware they were looking for him, and so he came right in and cooperated. Thanks for coming in to talk with us. Sure, sure. It's just crazy, you know? He had just found out when the family did. We understand you and Keisha were getting pretty serious. Yeah, but things sort of got complicated. He did not know he was in a relationship at some point with Keisha. What happened? Well, I started getting serious with someone else. We we're getting married, actually. Keisha believed you were going to marry her. Keisha thought he was going to propose to her, and then he he turned around and ended up giving the ring to some other girl. She must have taken that pretty hard. Yeah. She was mad, and she started getting into it with Rachel. It was the typical go between two girls fighting over a guy. Did Rachel ever threaten Keisha? Nah, never anything like that. He said she flaunted the fact that, you know, yeah, I'm going to be his wife, and, and you're not. So you don't think Rachel had anything to do with this? She couldn't have. She was with me. His statement was that he was with Rachel in Panama City. Panama City is a little over an hour from where Keisha's body was found. She was with you the whole night? Yeah. And you were in Panama City the entire time? Yes, with my brother Sean. He had some brothers that lived in Bay County, and it was his brother's house that he was at. While it's too early to know if Damien is telling the truth, detectives have nothing to hold him on. There is no evidence to point in his direction. We let him go, and we just continued to work the case. Next, detectives bring in Damien's fiance, 21-year-old Rachel Barnes. The girlfriend obviously was someone we were looking at. I mean, everybody, you know, was still considered a person of interest until we could get it down to the wire as to who we thought the person was. Questioned by detectives, Rachel doesn't deny knowing Keisha. They were running the same circle. But it all changed when Keisha found out Rachel was seeing Damien behind her back. She told us, and Keisha confronted her about it via text message. They had it out. She never denied her disagreement with Keisha over Damien. However, Rachel's account of their disagreement tracks pretty closely with what Damien had already told the detectives. Rachel also offers up the same alibi as Damien. Rachel swore to investigators she and Damien had been in Panama City all night on the 26th and to the 27th. She said she would never wish that on anybody. At this point, detectives aren't convinced Rachel's conscience is clear. She might have had a motive because here's Damien's old girlfriend, Keisha Smith, and he and were still having a relationship. However, when detectives follow up with Damien's brother, Sean, he confirms the couple's alibi. With the alibi verbally confirmed, that obviously puts detectives at an impasse. Early the following morning, the investigation gains momentum when the Jackson County Sheriff's Department locates Keisha's missing car in a park. They immediately calls us. We get the vehicle towed in, and we start doing in the search of the vehicle. While CSI sweep the vehicle, detectives also receive Keisha's autopsy report and make a shocking revelation. Keisha Smith was eight weeks pregnant. 
Stay tuned to learn more about this intriguing case when we return with more Fatal Attraction. Detectives investigating the murder of 25-year-old Keisha Smith have just learned that she was two months pregnant when she was killed. This is a tragic discovery, and it makes the detectives wonder if this is further proof that the love triangle between Damien, Rachel, and Keisha had boiled over. It's hard to believe this would be a reason to murder someone, but it could be the result of a jealous rage. Detectives also learn what kind of murder weapon they need to find. During the autopsy, the medical examiner recovers three 38 caliber bullets from Keisha's body. Which was valuable evidence, obviously, to be compared if we ever found the firearm. A search of Keisha's car, which Mariana police found abandoned in a park, proves less promising. We did not find anything in the vehicle of evidentiary value. With no leads stemming from Keisha's car, detectives hope to learn more about her pregnancy from her friend, Zaisha. Sometimes friends know things that parents don't know, and this case was personal for detectives. So they decided to see if Keisha's friends knew about the pregnancy. Did you know? I found out about a month ago, maybe a little more. She texted me and told me she hadn't been feeling too good and that she was late. Zaisha had urged her friend to take a pregnancy test. It was positive. She was pregnant. So I asked her how she felt about it. She said, I don't know right now. I'm kind of freaking out. And my emotions are everywhere. But I'm still excited. Zaisha tells detectives that she shared her friend's excitement. She always said she wanted another one. She already had a boy. She wanted a little girl. I was hoping maybe she got her girl this time. To investigators, it seems more than a coincidence that a month after learning she was pregnant, Keisha Smith was dead. Do you know who the father was? It was Damien. Or at least that's what Keisha told me. She was pretty adamant that it was, in fact, his baby. That's why she was so excited. She thought it was some kind of sign. I don't think she got intentionally pregnant, but when she did get pregnant, she thought the baby was going to fix everything. She felt she could, you know, win him back. Perhaps Damien's fiance, Rachel Barnes, felt the same way and feared the pregnancy would pull Damien away. From Rachel's perspective, she and Damien are getting serious. They are looking to build a new life together in Panama City. They're making plans to get married. Maybe Rachel saw this as a threat. Could she be responsible? Certainly, females are not an exception to being killers. And soon, a new discovery shines a more suspicious light on Rachel Barnes. In a bizarre stroke of luck, in early May, police in Panama City found Rachel's car on the side of the road. Florida tag, George India Union, Frank 01. They ran the tag place and they come back to her. Uh, Rachel Barnes, you want to check it out? Yep. And it was sort of abandoned, so that kind of made them suspicious. What officers find inside the car raises more red flags for Mariana detectives. It looked like there were efforts made to clean the car with bleach or some type of cleaner. It definitely had the appearance of an attempt to conceal a crime. The investigation reveals a tangled web of relationships, lies, and deceit, leading to a shocking conclusion. Stay tuned to learn more about this intriguing case when we return with more Fatal Attraction. McDonald's is not new to chicken, so maybe stop questioning that chicken cred and get your hands on the McCrispy. Juicy fried chicken, buttery bun, unmatched pickle to chicken ratio. Yeah, they know what they're doing. In fact, we can honestly say they're not new to chicken. They're true to chicken. The McCrispy. Only at McDonald's. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Life is so much more than a diagnosis. It's about sharing time with those you love, hanging with friends who lift you up, 
and experiencing all those moments that bring you joy. All hits, no skips. Learn more about Cascali Ribocyclob 200 milligrams at KISQALI.com and talk to your doctor to see if Cascali is right for you. So long live singing to the oldies, jamming out to something new, and everything in between. Detectives investigating Keisha Smith's murder are beginning to suspect that 21-year-old Rachel Barnes is the one who pulled the trigger. Rachel was engaged to Keisha's ex, Damian O'Neill. There had been some issues between the two women, arguing over text messages and social media. Detectives wonder if news that Keisha was pregnant with Damien's child pushed Rachel over the edge. Well, they found Rachel's car. There was some items in it that kind of made them suspicious. It was on the side of the road, the back seat covered in bleach, and only six days after Keisha's murder, detectives are very suspicious. Hoping to put Rachel and her car in Mariana on the night of the murder, detectives pull her phone records. There was nothing in the records to indicate that Rachel left Panama City the night of the murder. However, it doesn't prove her innocence just yet. She could have turned her phone off or left it behind. Still hoping to place Rachel near the scene of the murder, detectives begin canvassing local businesses. We're a small area, so we have a few hot spots that most people go to. Detectives focus their efforts on the strip of gas stations near the interstate. Several businesses have video camera, and it's a high traffic area. Reviewing the surveillance footage from one of the gas stations on the night of April 26th, it looks like they've hit the jackpot. They did see Rachel's car. It pulls into the gas station around 10 p.m. on the night of the murder, right around the time Keisha left her apartment. Just as detectives believe they have the proof they need, the investigation takes an unexpected turn. They looked at the video from the store and saw Damien O'Neill walking in there. That's damning evidence. It means that Damien O'Neill's not telling the truth, and it means that he could have done this murder. With Damien's alibi in tatters, detectives attempt to bring him in, but are unable to locate him. He started to evade us and blade low with different family members in Bay County to avoid us. However, detectives do find Rachel in a local hospital. Rachel had a medical issue right after the first time they talked to her. After consulting a doctor, detectives are allowed to bring Rachel in for a second interview. They confronted her that, yeah, you're not telling us the truth. He obviously wasn't with you all night in Panama City. You knew that he was in Mariana the night that Keisha was murdered, didn't you? Yes. She said that she lied in the first statement because she didn't know what he had gotten her involved in. Look, I didn't know he was going to kill her. He told her to just say I was with you all night without really explaining where he was. He just borrowed my car, told me he was going to Mariana to take care of some business. What time did he leave? Nine o'clock, maybe a little before. Since it's an hour's drive from Panama City, Rachel's account appears to line up with the gas station video showing Damien and Mariana at 10 p.m. When I found out she was dead, I was afraid I'd be next if I tell you the truth. She was terrified because she knew what kind of person Damien was. When detectives ask about Keisha's pregnancy, Rachel's response isn't what they were expecting. Did you know that Keisha was pregnant? Oh my God, Damien. Do. She denied knowing that Keisha was pregnant with Damien's child. You have to keep in mind, too, is she doing this because she fears we're going to find out later that you know, she was involved? On May 9th, with proof Damien lied about his alibi, detectives decide to try their luck by interviewing the one who vouched for him, his brother, Sean. They figured they could press him and maybe get him to give up his brother. Man, I already told you. Damien was with me. We know he was here. We know about the baby. 
Your brother killed a pregnant woman. You want to go down for that? He started worrying about himself and his own charges. Eventually, he said that Damien might have done something bad. OK, OK. I'll tell y'all what I know. Damien's brother goes on to explain what happened on April 26th. He was at my place. He took his girl's car, came back a few hours later. He came into my bedroom. As soon as you get rid of this. What is this? Damien had given him the gun. Damien had disclosed the case was pregnant. I think that he knew what Damien had done. What did you do? Just, just, just get rid of Damien. Damien. Just, just, what did you do? Just get rid of it. I didn't know what to do. He's my brother. So I hid the gun. Where's the gun? You got to put something on the table for me first. His whole concern was wanting to have immunity if he showed them where the gun was. That set this investigation in motion from having circumstantial evidence to having something we could actually work with. Cherie and I are real good friends. And she called me, she said, we got a lead. She said, we got boots on the ground. We're going to follow this lead. Based on Damien's brother's statement, police are able to recover the gun from a sewer drain in Panama City. The gun dried up in a lot of bags. It was a revolver, a silver-handled revolver, a 38 with a white grip. That's the same caliber as the bullets recovered during Keisha's autopsy. While investigators wait for results, they shift their focus to finding their suspected shooter. Now there is a full-on manhunt for Damian O'Neill. Stay tuned to learn more about this intriguing case when we return with more Fatal Attraction. On May 10th, 2017, detectives with the Jackson County, Florida Sheriff's Department believe they're finally on the verge of solving the murder of 25-year-old single mom, Keisha Smith. Detectives suspect that Keisha's ex-boyfriend, Damien O'Neill, murdered Keisha in hopes of hiding the pregnancy from his fiance. Detectives now have what they suspect is the murder weapon, but they still need to find Damien. We were finally advised that Damien was at a house in Bay County. Before the sun rises on the morning of May 11th, detectives and deputies surround the house. Sheriff's Department, open up! Detectives find Damien inside. Out of the way. He was sitting there playing a video game. On the ground now! Damien O'Neill is taken into custody without incident. Back at the station, investigators give him a chance to come clean. We read him his rights. I said, Damien, do you want to talk? He said no. You got nothing to say? I said, because I already gave you my statement and everything. Detectives tried tipping their hand to persuade Damien. I'm just gonna show you something. There's a gun wrapped up in the bag. There's the gun out with the five spent shell casing. That's the bags and stuff that you come out of. Okay? Yes, sir. Since you don't want to make no statement, Detective Edwards here has got some news for you. It's a bittersweet moment for Cherie Edwards when she formally arrests Damien. Could you be in charge? I found a murder. Putting my cuffs on him, I lost it. Not completely, but I teared up. It was very personal for me. That was my last piece of justice for Keisha. Once Damien is placed in a cell, Cherie Edwards and her husband race to give Keisha's mother the news. It was great for they, they, they personally came to the house and said, hey, we got him. We got him. 
On May 15th, Damien O'Neill is indicted for the second-degree murder of Keisha Smith. However, despite the fact that Keisha was carrying Damien's unborn child, he only faces a single murder charge. The length of time she had been pregnant did not meet the criteria by statute to pursue the unborn child's death. When the results from the ballistics test come in, investigators are now confident they can secure a conviction. And after ballistics compared the bullets from Keisha's body to that weapon, it was the murder weapon. The case against Damien is so strong that on May 22nd, he decides to make a full confession. Things just got out of hand, didn't they, Damien? Is that a yes? Can you say it? Yes, sir. Damien admits to meeting Keisha on the night of April 26th in an empty park on the outskirts of town. She got in his car and they drove. Where did y'all go? Was you out there in that field behind the old barn? Oh. But Damien says their talk started to get heated when he revealed that things between them were over for good. Okay. What were y'all arguing about? <laughs> Damien, I love you! Keisha, it's over. What Damien tells detectives next is completely unexpected. You're not leaving me, Damien. I won't let you. Keisha, stop. So you put a knife to my throat? And then what did you do? Keisha. What happened after you shot her? You just put her out there on the grass. In light of his full confession, Damien elects to plead guilty to second degree murder and avoid a jury trial. I was relieved to hear that he was going to plead for Priscilla's sake. It gave them closure without having to sit through a trial. However, police and prosecutors believe that Damien's claim of self-defense was meant to cover his true motive. I think they met and they got to arguing over this child. I told you to get rid of it. Why? Don't you feel anything for the baby? For me? She thought that it was going to bring them together. Can't you see? You're ruining everything? No! He just was not going to let her have that baby. And he just snapped. That's very frustrating for the family because they just want to know, why couldn't you resolve it some other way? And he would never say. During victim impact statements at the sentencing hearing, Keisha's mother gets her chance to tell Damien exactly what she thinks of him. I told him he's just the son of Satan. She said, we want him to sit and think of what he did to our little girl and unborn grandchild for the rest of his life. If I had my choice, I'd paint her picture on every wall, over four walls, and make sure he see him every day. The judge sentences Damien to life in prison. When they revealed that the sentence was life, it was like a weight had been lifted off of us. It won't take back what happened, but at least he's not going free. But no prison term will ever make up for what Damien took from the world. I don't want people to remember Keisha's life and how she lived. Her smile, 
Even now, I can close my eyes and I can just see her face and that sweet, genuine smile. I miss her every day. It's not a day, not a second, not a minute, not an hour that goes by that I don't think about her. All she wanted was someone to love her back. When love blends with hate, sometimes can lead to murder. This gripping case came to an end with the help of family and friends. Detectives are able to crack the case, discover the truth, and solve the murder of loved and admired Katia Smith. Katia's son, family, and friends will forever miss and mourn her death. Coming up on the next episode of the Fatal Attraction Podcast. They were two free spirits who had finally found happiness. They seemed like they were in love. This could have been a fairy tale ending. Until a horrifying crime robbed them of their happily ever after. This guy that owed him some money and he found him. It went through his the order. There was substantial internal bleeding. I'm begging you to come right now, please. A couple in love with hopes of a happily ever after leads to a heinous crime. What happened to 55-year-old Chicago native and veteran Andre Brown? What happens when love becomes fatal? Tune in to the next episode of the Fatal Attraction Podcast. We will see you in the next episode.